it's now time in which to grow potatoes and in this episode I'm going to give you 13 tips in growing first and second earlies otherwise known as determinate potatoes in containers and stay tuned throughout this video because during this video I'm going to give you a huge discount for buying these containers from Oakland Gardens. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening. First, second or determinate potatoes are planted early in the season and these are quick growing potatoes. They're planted much earlier than you would main crop or indeterminate potatoes. So my first tip for these potatoes is to chit them or sprout them. Now, I did a video on this a little while ago and I'll make sure there's a link in the description below. But what this does, it gives them an early start so that we can plant them in a tunnel or whatever in a container and make sure that they are flying from the beginning because it's a lot colder at this time of year. Tip number two is to use a container that is 30 litres in size or around 8 US gallons. Now there are many reasons for this. So reason number one is it uses much less compost to fill than it does larger containers. Reason number two, their size. It's adequate for the plants to provide you with around 15 pounds worth of potatoes in weight. So that's a really good harvest out of such a small container. Reason number three, the plant's root zone is restricted and it allows the plant to take up all the nutrients that you've put in this container. They can't go elsewhere. So it's a really good way of ensuring that that plant takes up all the nutrition it requires. Reason number four, because they're black and they're a decent size but not too big they warm up quickly in the sun they're not down in the ground and relying on the uh, temperature to be quite high they will warm quicker because they will attract that sun's rays at the root zone reason number five they are large enough to provide the plants room for growth for the whole season but they're small enough in order to move them around in the tunnel or take them outside so this is fantastic because we can plant them now when the weather is terrible outside in a tunnel and we can let them get growing and when we're ready we can just pick up the whole container with these handles and take it outside and place it into its final growing position and reason number six the plastic so because of that moisture can't escape so they really help in retaining moisture tip number three when sowing your first second or determinate potatoes then four seed are used in a 30 litre container and the reason for this is because this variety of potatoes they grow on a single level they don't grow on multiple levels like indeterminate potatoes and because they grow on a single level we can take advantage of that and double up on the seed if we were to just put two seed in, then we'd only be using about a third of the compost that's in the container and that's a total waste. So it's much better for us to maximize that compost and get the use out of it by using four seed potatoes. Over the years, you folks have been asking me about all the potato feeds I'm using. And in this container, I'm gonna use three ounces of blood fish and bone meal and two ounces of a pelleted potato feed, a granular organic feed. Now this pelleted feed, like I said, is organic and it can be purchased from online retailers all over the place. But if you can't find it where you're from, then look for a granular feed that's organic. And in the NPK ballpark of around about six, 15 and 20 and that way you're going to get a really good balanced feed for your potatoes tip number five don't use chicken manure pellets or other high nitrogen feeds to feed your potatoes these are way too high in nitrogen and they give you huge awesome top growth but the problem is with this top growth you think you're going to get a fantastic harvest but upon harvesting your potatoes, you're gonna be surely disappointed because of the nitrogen, then the, uh, it sort of gives you the top growth instead of tuber formation. Tip number six, make sure that when you're mixing in your 
feed into your compost make sure you mix it thoroughly now the reason for this is if you leave pockets of feed within the compost when the roots hit that it can burn the actual root system and then that will result in stunted growth and a very poor yield tip seven well that is to fill the containers at the time of planting i see too many people trying to just sort of uh, fill them up and, and earth them up as they go. There's no need with these containers. Plant them and fill them to the top. Listen, we're all busy, especially at this time of year in potting on seedlings and sowing new seed and everything else. The last thing we wanna be doing is earthing up something that we could have done when we sowed them. So fill the containers now and it has the added bonus of the fact that you're not gonna damage them homes as you fill in with compost later. So just fill it to the top and then forget about them until they're through. Tip number eight is to mulch the surface of the uh, container that you're using as well and the reason for this is has many benefits now benefit number one for this is that mulching that surface is going to help with insulating the containers from the cold weather that we can still have at this time of year the second benefit then is that you can also um, stop moisture loss because it keeps a cap on the soil surface and stops evaporation the third is it insulates in the summer and stops it getting too hot. And the fourth reason is this mulch will actually hold moisture and then wick it back into the soil later on when the soil starts drying out. The soil will pull that moisture out of the mulch and use that for the tubers. Tip number nine, when you're able to put those containers outside after the last frost, well, you can put them out in place and then build a structure over them that they can grow through. And this has many benefits, but what it does do, it keeps the foliage upright and this will help in shading the buckets during the summer, which will help with moisture retention so you're not watering all the time, but it will also keep the foliage up so that they can photosynthesize properly and it keeps the foliage up so you are not treading on it when you're trying to water. It's all up where it should be out of the way. Tip number 10, when it comes to watering, well, you want to water it until the water comes out of the holes in the buckets. There's holes all around the perimeter and in the base. Then you don't want to just leave it at that point because um, you want to walk away for about 10 minutes and then come back to it and water it again until it comes out of the holes again for a second time. Now the reason for this is because composts and some other med growing mediums, they uh, have the ability to shed water when they're dry rather than absorbing it. So it takes multiple waterings to get that wet and moist properly. Tip number 11 is about watering. Now, I've run out of fingers so I can't do 11, but uh, never mind that. So what I'm saying with the watering, the way to tell if your container requires water is to use your index finger and push it right the way up to the very last knuckle. Now, if it's moist, then it doesn't require water. But if it's dry, then you need to water it as we've already explained. Tip number 12, as the leaves start yellowing, then it's coming to the end of those potatoes growing season. But allow them to continue growing until about 50% of the leaves are yellow, at which point you then wanna cut off all the homes off the potatoes, but don't harvest the potatoes just yet. Leave them in the containers for about two weeks this will harden up the skin so you don't damage them and also the potatoes will continue to swell during that two week period. Tip number 13, guys, this is the most important tip of all of them. And this tip is, if you want more information on growing potatoes, go and watch my other videos because I really, really well covered this subject and there isn't a video that I haven't covered the questions that you're asking on. Now, if you go to the playlists and look for the potato playlists, there are three of them and you'll be able to find all of the potato videos within them. That is probably the best tip I'm gonna give you today. As I said earlier on, we have a huge discount off the Oakland Garden containers for growing these potatoes, the exact ones that I use now. And 
it's only available to newsletter readers so if you want to be able to take advantage of this discount you need to get across to the uh, website and sign up for the newsletter it's totally free and you will be sent the code in the next day or so now the code is that's going to be provided is going to allow you to have 10 of these containers for just 30 pounds it's a huge saving it's just three quid each for one of these containers for everybody that's not in the uk because oaklands don't send outside the uk i'm still working on trying to get them drop shipped into amazon.com for you bear with me as soon as i can figure out how all of that works and everything else um i'll be on it and the containers will be available it may not necessarily be in time for you this year but i am still working on it guys all right if you've got value from this video you can subscribe here and then when you've done that if you want to learn how i got 235 pounds of potatoes out of just 200 square feet of these containers without water then this is the next video that you should watch I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks, you reap what you sow and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.